Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be talking all about how you can import from D&D Beyond into your Foundry game. This includes spells, items, characters. We will not be touching on monsters, however, though, because that requires a separate Patreon subscription. In addition to talking about how to import all of these features, we'll also be talking about how you can customize them so that the customizations are applied to any character you bring in later on. These customizations include things such as DAE effects, JB2A assets, as well as even sound effects via Maestro, or really anything else you want to add in. As a note for this video, you will need to have the Chrome browser and be willing to add in a Chrome extension. This Chrome extension is provided by Mr. Primate, the same developer behind the D&D Beyond Importer. The first step is to download the latest release of the Chrome extension and put it in its own folder after unzipping it. If you've done it correctly, it should look something like this. At the top of Chrome, you want to click the three dots, go to More Tools, Extensions, you'll see this page here. If you haven't already, turn on Developer Mode, then click Load Unpacked, and you want to select the folder where you have the importer stored. If you have done it correctly, you'll see it pop up here, and that means that you're pretty much set. If you haven't already, make sure you log into your D&D Beyond account. At the top, go ahead and click Mr. Primate's D&D Beyond Importer, and you're going to click where it says Get Cookie. With that out of the way, we can go to Foundry. Make sure you have installed and enabled the D&D Beyond Importer. Since there are two importers, and there might be some confusion, you can look at the core setup, and it should look like this, and we can see Mr. Primate right there. With the cookie that you recently obtained from the Chrome extension, you want to go ahead and paste it into this box right here. Notice that we don't see the cookie itself. This is because you do not want to share it with other people because it is the equivalent of your password for D&D Beyond. So we also want to change a few of the other settings as well. We want to change the file location to somewhere where we can store images that we bring in from D&D Beyond. And if you have a campaign URL that is share content, you can go ahead and enter that URL right here as well as if you are a subscriber, you can enter your Patreon key. You can go ahead and change the companions if you wish. I suggest leaving them as is because we are going to be modifying these in order to adapt our characters later on. Next, in the companions tab, we want to click DDB Muncher, and we are going to bring in some spells and items into our game. Now, we have some options here. Since it is our first time bringing things in, we don't really need to update existing things because there's nothing to update. I would prefer not to use the SRD Compendium things because instead I am going to be copying effects from DAE, items, and spells. If you follow along with some of my other videos, it's very likely that you already have dynamic active effects as well as DAE, SRD, but if you don't, in order to use this option, you will need both of those modules installed in your game. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and begin and start the muncher first for spells, and then we'll go ahead and do items after. After the munching has finished, if we go take a look at our compendium, we can see we have DDB items. They are brought in, as well as DDB spells. And because I am using the Iconizer module, the icons for these spells and items are a little bit more unique than the ones on D&D Beyond. Since we are going to be customizing these compendiums, it's a good idea to make copies just in case something goes wrong and you need a backup later on. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate both of those right now, just naming it DDB Spells 2 and DDB Items 2. And just to show that the DAE SRD spells were brought in as expected, if we go to the spell Bless, go to Effects, go to Edit, Effects, and we can see there is an active effect already set up on the spell. Having made copies of the companions, I am now going to go into the original find a spell to modify. In this case, I'm going to be modifying the spell Catapult. And I'm going to be adding in an effect to the spell as well as a sound that will be activated when the spell is cast. For the effects today, I'll be using assets from JB2A as well as macros that are also provided via JB2A. To add the effect is as simple as copying the name of the macro and putting it down here in the bottom this is assuming you already have MIDIQL enabled as well as the onUse macro enabled. And then we can go ahead and close it out as I find a sound effect that I want to add in. 
After finding the sound that I want using the Maestro module, I can go ahead and select the playlist and choose the sound effect as desired. A note about the macros that I'm using in today's video. They were all developed and compiled into a module by Octagon and they are incredibly simple to use. A change even made them easier to use because rather than having to look through for a specific effect, you can find the macros that are labeled like so. All attack spells, all creature attacks, all melee attacks, all ranged weapons macro. So after adding the module and importing the macros into your game, we want to look for the one that matches up with the item that we want to adapt. I should also note that there are other options as well that can be adapted and changed. I want to make use of these new macros on the longsword. I'm going to be modifying it on the character directly, but I could easily just as well modify it in the compendium as we've been showing off. At the bottom, I'm going to type in all melee attacks. At the top, I don't need to change anything with the name because it is going to read that this is a longsword. But in source here, where you would see like PHB, you need to change it to which effect you want to use. In this case, I want to use the red longsword effect. And then I can close it out. And we can test it on this other hobgoblin standing right there. The dice is rolled. We can see the effect comes in, as well as there is a token magic effect as well. Now going back to my compendium, I will be editing one additional spell off screen, and that is Ray of Frost. After you've customized the DTB spells compendium as much as desired, keep in mind that you can always import the character again if you customize it later. It's a pretty simple process. You want to go ahead and create a new actor. The naming doesn't really matter because the name is going to change. You just want to make sure it is set to a player character. Click the D&D Beyond icon next to the name. And now we need to go over to D&D Beyond and grab the URL for our character. We should see a check mark appear after we have entered in our URL. At this point, most of this is pretty much set. The only thing we need to change is since we are going to be using the customized compendium, we need to go to the advanced settings. Here we're going to click replace items using DDB importer compendiums. This is the only box we need to check because we don't need to use the SRD. We've already copied over from DAE, so everything else is pretty much set. The only thing we're going to be losing out on is active effects, so that's easy enough to fix. And then we are set to go back to import character and start the import. It can take some time importing, especially these spellbooks, so go ahead and just be patient as it brings everything in. Here we have our actor. The only change I made was I updated the token. Let's go ahead and test out both of these spells, starting off with the catapult. The sound effect goes off, and the effect goes as well. Next, let's test Ray of Frost. You hear the sound effect, the dice is rolled, and there is the Ray of Frost. All right, so we can see that our customizations were kept and brought in via the importer right away. That is where we'll be finishing up for today. As always, let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Thanks, everyone.